Hello, hello. This is Ryan. God has been tugging at my heart with this one main certain scripture for like a um, couple of days. It was on, it's been on my heart and in my mind to share. And what came to my heart is that I need to do this. And I do want to say what thus said the Lord. Um, it's about 1 Peter 5a, as I said before. And, and I'm just going to get right into it, jump straight into it. Um, it's a, it says in 1 Peter 5 8, be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. I will repeat it. 1 Peter 5 8, be sober, be vigilant. Vigilant means alert, it means to be watchful. Because your adversary, who's our adversary? The devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. And I have a story. Um, I even put it on my Facebook timeline about a guy um, raping and then murdering a young 16-year-old. And you know what came to mind was the scripture. About how your lust can be so strong. Something that goes against God's word that you operating in, which is saying if you don't get rid of your demons that you are battling by going to Jesus and asking Jesus to cleanse you because Jesus can't set you free. The blood can cleanse anything. Nothing can withstand the blood. You will be robbed. You will be robbed so much by the demonic, strong, powerful force. And that's what happened to the man that was on my timeline for raping and murdering that young girl. All it was was his demons. He let his demons get the best of him. If you look at this spiritually, because that, that's all it has to, it has to be that. The devil knows your weaknesses and all it all all that happened in that situation with that young with that man, which is now in jail, who raped and killed that young, beautiful sister, which was 16 years old, is now in jail because the devil uses your weaknesses to rob you. If you have a lust for money, you have a lust for girls, you have a lust for guys, whatever your lust is that goes contrary to God's word, pornography, anything, the devil will use that and use you. And then you will be robbed. Remember, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And it's really sad to see that. It really is. But that's what came to mind. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Who can the devil devour? Anyone that doesn't stand on the word of God. If you don't stand for anything, you'll fall to something. If you don't stand on the promises of God, what do you think is going to happen? If you don't confront your demons that you're battling by, by going to Jesus, the devil will use you because you have cracks and you have doorways open. You know, walk in, walk in the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. The flesh is never satisfied. That's why... We continuously, over and over and over and over, continuously participate in sin. You know, yes, I once, yes, you once have been walking in the flesh. And some may be still walking in the flesh and still participating in sin. But Paul said it in his word that in my flesh dwell of no good thing. Like it profits nothing. And Paul also said that all things are permissible, but they are not beneficial. You can smoke, you can drink, you can do all of these things that God may not allow and want you to do, fornicate, you know, whatever it may be. But is it going to help you grow spiritually? Is it going to benefit you spiritually? You know, you may light up a joint, smoke it. You may have sex with a, with a young woman or you may have sex with a guy. But is it going to benefit you? 
it's not going to benefit you. And that's what I mean by like how the devil walks around trying to see, wants to see, and wants to use you and rob you from your weaknesses. Because God and God is strength. You know, his grace is sufficient. But with Satan, it, it brings weakness, you know, because like I said, you may have a gambling habit. You may have anything like a pornography, a drug addiction, alcohol, drinking addiction. The devil can use that to rob you continuously, 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 continuously over and over. If you do not, and I will repeat, if we do not go to Jesus, and we do not go to Jesus with a clean heart, with a crying out voice saying, Lord, help me. Lord, save me. Lord, cleanse me from this unrighteous sin, this detestable sin that stinks under your nostrils. Lord, I repent. Have mercy on me. If we don't repent and we keep on rehearsing, rehearsing and nursing the wrong things and letting the devil ride us and get the best of us, we will lose out. We will lose out. Satan will rob us all the time if we do not cry out to Jesus and ask for help and ask him to, 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 to help us from whatever's going on with us. Romans 10, 11. You call on the name of the Lord, you shall not be ashamed. Don't be ashamed to call on the name of the Lord. You know, we can be saved. We can be saved, but participating in sin can still lead us to hell fire if we do not change our ways. Repentance means turn away from your wicked ways, you know. Turn away from your wicked ways and walk in a new direction. Yes, you may be saved, but things are only hidden to be revealed. You may have a silent sin in your heart that goes against the word of God. And the devil just using your lust, your greedy appetite to rob you. And you're letting it happen. God can see all things. God never sleeps or slumbers. He can see anything. So when you are doing a secret sin or anything, you're not hiding anything from God. God sees everything. So that's why I say right here, right now, that any sin, anything that you're participating in, say to yourself that I will not let the devil rob me anymore. That sin shall not have any dominion over me in the name of Jesus. You better bind Whatever's going on with you and cry out to the Lord. We all need to do that. Myself, those who view this video, you may be struggling in something in your life. But Jesus said, cast your cares upon me because I care for you. God wants you to cast all your cares to him because he cares for you. Cast your care. That means sin and iniquity that you're struggling in. That means financial problems, your family acting up, your family going crazy. You may not even have a peace of mind, but the Lord can give you a peace of mind, a sober mind. A sober mind is a mind that stays on the word of God. Be vigilant because the devil, you have to be vigilant all the time because we are in the last days. And that's what Satan loves to do. He is the accuser of the brethren. He is our enemy. And we need to be aware of our enemy, which is the devil. That's our enemy. Not the person on your job. That's not your enemy. When the person picking at you and saying this and saying that, your boss doing this or doing whatever that you don't like, that's not, that's not them doing that. That's the spirit that worketh behind them, which is Satan. Trying to pick at you and rob you. That's why I say be sober, be vigilant. That's why you have to stay in your word of God. That's why you have to stay prayed up. That's why you have to depend on Jesus Christ. With Jesus' help, you can do all things. Through Christ, which strengthens you. Who strengthens you? Jesus. Philippians 4.13. And I'm going to read 1 Peter 5 in a different translation. The contemporary English version. 1 
1 Peter 5a in the contemporary English version. Be on your guard and stay awake. Your enemy, the devil, is like a roaring lion sneaking around to find someone to attack. Okay, let me go to verse 9. But you must resist the devil and stay strong in your faith. You know that all over the world, the Lord's followers are suffering just as you are. 1 Peter 5, 10 in the contemporary English version. But God shows undeserved kindness to everyone. That's why he appointed Christ Jesus to choose you to share in his eternal glory. You will suffer for a while, but God will make you complete, steady, strong, and firm. God will be in control forever. Amen. This is 1 Peter 5, 8. And then I went all the way down and read 11. But you can read the whole 1 Peter 5. But I went. No, I'm going to go up. I'm going to go up to 1 Peter 5, 6. In the contemporary English version. I'm not in the King James. I'm in the contemporary English version because it, it milks it down. But I do love the King James version. Just to just just to just milk it down a little bit more. First Peter 5, 6 in the contemporary English version. Be humble in the presence of God's mighty power and he will honor you when the time comes. God cares for you. So turn all your worries over to him. That's what that's what that means in the King James version. Cast all your cares upon him. That means cast all your cares, things you're going through, things you're struggling in, financial problems, marriage problems, relationship problems, friendship problems, anything, something on the job. Cast all your cares to him. You can let Satan creep in your life by having doubt, fear and worry. Those are doorways, access ways where Satan can come in. And we're not even really realizing it. We allow him to come in by what I just said by doubting, fear, because perfect love casts out fear. Second Timothy 1 7. God doesn't give us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. We need to go to Jesus because it's too many people passing away and dying out here. If we do not, and I keep saying it over and over in this video, if we do not face our demons. And we do not go to Jesus and ask the Lord to save us with a sincere, pure heart. Because a pure heart will see God. If we do not go to Jesus and we keep on holding on to things that rob us spiritually and that hinder us and that limits the hand of God. Because God already did everything. He sent his son to die on the cross for us. But we participate in his sin and it's limiting and it's messing up everything. It's, it could take the process a little longer. Because you participated in sin activity. When he died for your sins. He died for the sins of the whole world. For God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. But this is a serious matter. Because it's too many people dying. It's too many young brothers dying. It's too many young people dying around my age. 25. I'm 25 years old. It's too many of us passing away. The devil taking us out early because he know his time is up. He know that the returning of the Lord is nigh. So what can I do? You know, like I said, our weaknesses, he robbed us for them. I've been robbed before. And I, I, I say to myself, no more. For God, I live. For God, I die. And we have to help each other. We all need each other. I don't care how strong you are. We all need each other. This is a battle, a spiritual battle. But you read Ephesians 6, but we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We don't wrestle against that. We're not wrestling against that. Our enemy is Satan. But I'm sticking to 1 Peter 5, 8. We need to be sober, be vigilant. We need to stay awake. Be on your guard and stay awake. Your enemy, the devil, is like a roaring lion sneaking around to find someone to attack. And like I said, he uses our weaknesses against us. And we may be struggling in the area because we're still trying to hold on to what we want to do versus God wants us not to do. We may know God is calling us and we may know that he wants us to let go of this bad habit, this attitude that's robbing us continuously. 
And we allow Satan to defeat us. We allow Satan to rob us and laugh at us when really we are victorious. You know, it's just time for game time to stop. It's time for the games. It's time for all this stuff to stop. Even with myself. I'm not just saying this for anybody else. I'm saying this for me also. Because God do not like a hypocrite. He hates hypocrisy. But it's too many people dying. Young people dying. Older people, mamas, daddies burying their children. Because we want to participate in sin. Wow. Act crazy. Act like a fool. Cut loose. Making foolish decisions that we know will harm us, but we're still going to do it because it feels right. But not knowing that the flesh wants to be in authority. The flesh wants to take authority. That's why the flesh is never satisfied. That's why you continuously keep practicing in sin and iniquity. And like I said about that older man that raped and killed that young, beautiful girl. Like I said, because we battling with demons, but we are not trying to find a way out. And the way out is Jesus Christ. And it's time to be sober. It's time to be vigilant. It's time to stay awake. It's time to be on guard. It's time to quit playing church. It's time to really sincerely repent instead of just religiously just saying, oh, Lord, forgive me. You know, like just doing it because it's just something to do. When really you being robbed and the devil laughing at you because every time you get tested and confronted with something that you are tempted in, you uh, you just yield to doing it. And people need to stop saying we need to stop saying that that God tempted us. Because God can't not tempt you with evil. God is not evil. Why would God want to do that to you? Why would God want you to stumble and fall in your walk with him? Why? 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 God would not want to do that. That's not God. Temptation is a lustful desire that is dwelling within you. That you may want to do whatever it is, what you get tempted in. And then you blame it on something else. When really that is a lustful desire that is dwelling within you. And then you give play to Satan, and that's why you continuously keep doing the wrong things. We need to repent. We need to depend on Jesus. And we need to know and believe in the word of God that by the blood of Jesus, we are cleansed and we will be made whole. We will be set free because whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Who the Son shall set free is free indeed. Hmm. Jesus is that we need to go to Jesus and stop letting sin rob us. And we need to stop participating in sin because God hates sin. He loves us. He just doesn't love the sin and the activity that we're doing. Letting sin rob us by our weaknesses. We need to take it to the altar. We need to take it to Jesus and we need to turn away from it. Repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 